Mike, did you want to, you wanted to add something? Yeah, I just want to say something on the point of, you know, the people that are the first ones to reject reasoned arguments or evidence when you bring it to them about decisions that they've made in their life, they're the first people to tell you why you shouldn't do things, why it's a bad idea. I know when I was working at my jobby job and I was planning to quit to come work with Steph on Freedom Main Radio, I had, oh, every single person I knew in that building just about tell me why this was a bad idea. Oh, what is your health insurance going to be like? Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm really concerned about that. What pension plan? Let's talk about that. What is, how, are you, how are you really doing? All these people that didn't really give a shit about me for, oh, I don't know, the 10 years that I worked there now were very, very concerned about what I was going to do, my future, my goals, my dreams, my hopes. What they saw was someone who was happy and who was escaping the fucking cage. Someone that was escaping the hamster wheel that they had been running on, some of them for 10 years, 20 years, some 30 years. I've heard stories from people when I was working there. You know, the guy comes in for the the college summer job type thing. Oh, he's just going to work, scrap up some money, put it together, you know, and then he'll be gone in, you know, a couple months. And then they're still there 30 years later. They got trapped in the comfort because, hey, the check keeps coming. Hey, this is kind of easy. This doesn't push my boundaries too much. It's not too uncomfortable. And they decided to stay there. Stay there, which is fine for a day, fine for a week, fine for a month, fine for a year, maybe even a couple years. But then before they know it, they wake up and they're 60 years old. They're still working at this job that they hate and they have no passion for. And they hate to see anyone make a move or make a decision to better their life and pursue their dreams and pursue something more than what they now have. Because they pissed away their opportunities. They pissed away their chance. They pissed away their opportunity to live their dreams and pursue something that they were passionate about. And now they just want to tell you why you doing what you're doing, why it's such a bad idea. Because just the fact that you have that option and you're breaking out of that cage, you're breaking out of that mold, you're escaping that hamster wheel, that just shines a spotlight right in their face at every missed opportunity that they had, everything they pissed away, all the time they wasted, and the fact that they're going to go to their grave as cowards, not having pursued their dreams, not having pursued that which they're passionate about. And they just stayed in the creature comforts of a comfortable job a paycheck that comes reliably every single two weeks and uh you know oh that 401k plan that's probably not gonna be worth shit when the dollar completely collapses and everything that was inside it goes (laughs) completely belly up but yeah the people that want to say why you shouldn't do stuff if you're excited about a big goal or dream be very skeptical and as you said look at what their life is like Where does their credibility come from to give any kind of advice? Are they aware that they have no credibility if they have no credibility? There's nothing worse than the person with no credibility talking as if they have credibility. So, you know, if someone someone who's pissed away their life is saying, go, go live your dreams, don't end up like me, I'm aware, you know, I'm aware how this looks coming from me, but don't make the same mistakes I did. That's something to listen to. But if it's someone that hates their life, hates their husband, hates their wife, you know, hates their kids, hates everything about their job, walks in the door every day with a scowl on their face, hating the air that they have to breathe, uh, don't don't take advice from that person. And like you said, you're probably better off if you just do the exact opposite of what they did. You're probably going to wind up in a far better place. Absolutely. Oh yeah, the planet is full of just people who are like, "There's a dream, kill it." <laughs> Tall poppy, it cut it down. It. Yeah, yeah, tall poppy, cut it down. The hammer's sticking up, nail it down. Yeah, I mean, they're just dream killers. They're just dream killers. And uh, most people, if you share something that you're passionate about, will do their very best to strangle it in its grip. I'm sorry, it's just a reality. And then you have all these movies, right? All these movies out there about basically live small. Live small. Isn't getting drunk funny? Yeah. yeah <laughs> right? Cool. Isn't it cool to just hang around and play video games and stuff. But then a man is going to show up. Some man is going to show up and whisk you away to a life of magic and excitement and passion. Someone's just going to come find you. Right. Right. And you're going to be special. God loves you because who else can handle it? (laughs) Who else can stand it? Anyway, listen, Mike, let's move on to the next caller. I want to make sure we get through our queue today. God help us at least once. Uh, so, yeah, thanks very much for calling in. Great questions. I know we sort of danced around quite a bit, but hopefully it's useful. And if you do, of course, get stuck, feel free to call back in. 